Thanks for watching. Download your free step-by-step -step printable guide to rendering lard by following the link in the description section. And please remember, share and like this video. Hey everybody, it's Carolyn from Homesteading Family and we have been talking about fat lately. That's right, we're talking about lard and about rendering and using lard. Now here I have some pig back fat. This is not rendered fat. And when you look at this, you'll realize that it's got some bits of veins, some little bits of meat on it. There's all sorts of things in here that is not actually the fat itself. Now, fat itself is shelf stable. Um, but when you get little bits of meat and other tissues in there, that is not. So when you have fat, that is non-rendered, you need to treat it like raw meat. Namely, you need to keep it in the freezer or in the refrigerator for only short amounts of time, and you can't leave this out on the counter. When you render, you're gonna take this plain old fat, just like you get it off the animal, and you're gonna purify it by heating it and straining it. Now, for most of us, what we really want is the lard, and you need to realize that the larger you have these cut, the less lard you're going to end up with. Um, the, the more finely you get this cut and even ground, the more surface area is gonna melt out, the more lard you're going to end up with in the end. People, I would really recommend just starting with a very, very small chop or a, uh, or a grind. Now, the other thing that you're gonna need to have ready is a very heavy bottomed pot. Uh, there are many different methods for doing this, from doing it in the oven to the stove top, some people do it in a crock pot, and all of those are fine, but I'm gonna recommend that if you're a beginner, you really dive right in and do it right on the stove top in a heavy bottomed pot. And the reason is that the most common ways to ruin your lard have to do with not watching it closely enough, either cooking it too hot or cooking it too long. And I find that most people are scared of rendering lard when they start, and so they, they like the idea of sticking it in the oven and then forgetting about it. But that's a surefire way to get overcooked lard, which is not gonna be any good in your final product. So I really recommend, as a beginner, that you just dive right in it and get to really know your lard making process and do it on a stove top with a heavy bottom pot. A cast iron pot is ideal for this because for one, you have these real thick walls and it's really gonna help distribute the heat so you don't get burned sections. But for two, you're gonna end up with a pot that is even better seasoned than when you started because of the long cook time just in the fat. So it ends up helping out your pot and your lard. Now today I'm gonna to go ahead and just cut these in strips because I want you guys to be able to see how to handle the cracklings. Um, and if I do this in that fine grind, you're just, the cracklings are gonna be almost non-existent. When you go to cut your fat, um, make sure that you have this at least slightly frozen. It will make your job so much easier. All right, now I have all of this pig fat cut up into strips, and um, I also have taken just a handful of fat and cut it into a much smaller dice so that we can speed up the beginning of this process a lot. This will help it go a lot faster if you're working with these strips. If you're already working with ground fat, then just take a little bit of that off to the side. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm gonna turn my pot here on to low, and immediately I'm gonna put in this small ch uh, chopped, diced fat. And it's just a handful. And all I'm going to do here is let that start to render slowly. And what that means effectually is that it's going to start melting. And I just wanna make sure that I go ahead and move that all around while it's doing it. Now it's gonna take a minute because this is cool cast iron, but you know, it's better to be a little um, over-exaggerated with the stirring at this point than it is to walk away for too long because you really want to give this an opportunity to melt low and slow. 
Now, I know a lot of directions that you see out on the internet and even in some books recommend using water at the bottom of your rendering pot. People recommend that because they're afraid they're gonna scorch their lard. So if you just start this low and slow, then you really won't have that problem. You're essentially oiling the bottom of your pan when you're doing this because you're just getting that uh, the beginning bits of that lard rendered out. As you're rendering your lard, it's really important to note that the two enemies of a properly rendered lard are moisture and impurities. And a lot of people have come to me and asked me about rendering lard and had the comment that their lard got moldy all the way through, not just on the surface. And um, what did they do wrong? Inevitably, those people were following directions that called for having water at the bottom of their pot. So I just find that starting low and slow is a much more surefire method. Now this lard is starting to render out and so you can see we have a nice little bit of a layer of fat in there. It's starting to puddle up a little bit and we wanna keep this moving around a lot and let it just render out a little bit more. All right, now that has started uh, liquefying a little bit there, I'm gonna add a handful of my larger stripped pig fat here. And just like that, I'm gonna keep it moving around. Now a question that I get a lot is, doesn't it smell when you render lard? If you render lard properly, it should just have the smell of cooking pork. Um, in a few minutes, we're gonna be able to walk away from this and just come back and stir regularly, but you don't have to stand here the entire time. Okay, so now that these guys are all the way nicely coated and they're starting to um, sizzle down there at the bottom, I am going to go ahead and just keep an eye on them, but I'm gonna stop stirring quite so constantly. Now eventually your cracklings are gonna start browning and you know at some point that's just gonna happen and that's just fine, just as long as you've been keeping it on a low and slow setting. Now you'll see that we've got a lot of bubbling here happening. And I want you to think about when you're deep frying something, what is it that splatters and um, bubbles? Well, it's moisture, it's liquid that has gotten in there. And so what we're really looking for for finished lard is for your cracklings to be nicely, uniformly dark, deep fried and browned, and for the splattering and bubbling to stop. That means that you have cooked off all of the moisture. All right, now these guys are still at the same temperature as when you last saw them, but they've cooked down for about 20 more minutes and they're still on low. You can see how um, much fewer bubbles there are and how um, it has really stopped spluttering and splattering quite as much. And there is still some bubbling though, so that tells us there's still some liquid in there. All right, now you can see that these is completely stopped um, boiling, even though this is still on the same heat that it was before. So this is very hot oil. It is cooking right now, but we have completely removed all of the moisture. And um, the cracklings have now all gotten very nicely dark, kind of a, a just a nice golden brown. So we're gonna go ahead and take these out. And we're going to just scoop them out if you can, um, like this, so you just don't lose any of that good lard. And we're gonna dry them or drain them out onto a, uh, a towel of some sort, a paper towel if that's what you use. These things are absolutely delicious once they're salted. Now I'm just getting out the most of the big chunks that I have. I still have this heating. And the reason for that is, is we want to keep this lard as hot as we can um, because we want to seal it in jars. Now we're not actually canning it. We're not putting it through a canner. We're just using the jars and sealed lids 
as a method to make it last longer without going rancid from the air movement. So this just keeps them in an airtight container. Now again, we're not technically canning this. So if you, um, you know, if you have moisture in here, if you have anything, if you have, or don't get all the impurities out, um, this is not gonna keep it from going bad. Uh, because we're not actually canning it. You'd have to pressure can that and we're not doing that. So you don't have to really because it's just pure fat. So here we have our very hot fat and we have our jars which are nice and clean. And here's something that's really important. They need to be warm. They should not be cool or cold. And the reason for that is that we're putting in extremely hot lard. This is very, very hot. And so um, we want to make sure that these are very warm so that they don't crack, but we also want to make sure that they're very dry. I now have my very hot lard and I'm going to turn that off so I'm not splattering any um, hot lard down onto the heating element. I don't want to start a fire. And I've got my warm jars that are very dry. I have a funnel and then I have a filter and you don't want to use a nylon one. This will just absolutely melt it. Um, and then I have some finely woven cotton cloth here. You could use a butter muslin. You could use a coffee filter if you wanted, but you'd need to have a few of those on hand because they tend to clog up pretty quickly, which is a good thing. It means it's getting all the little fine particles out of your lard. Now, we're going to want to just ladle this right on in. Now you'll see right when it goes in the jar that it's gonna be kind of a yellowy color. And um, when it cools though, it is gonna be a nice creamy white. Now I also have my canning lids ready to go because you're gonna want to get those lids right on as soon as we get this full. Because you're not actually gonna stick this in a hot water bath, you don't need to worry about headspace. The fuller it is, the less oxygen is going to be in that jar and uh, the uh, longer it will keep. Now you don't wanna go through and do all of them before you get your lids on. You wanna get them on immediately to take advantage of all that heat. You wanna screw that right on and then set it aside to cool. And oh, wow. Enjoy these guys. Mmm, those are good. All right guys, now this lard has been cooling for about 24 hours and you can see that it has turned a very nice, just kind of creamy white color. So let's get into one of these and see what we've got here. All right, now you can see here that the texture is creamy and um, not completely hard, and that is a lard. Now the smell, it definitely has a little bit of a lardish type smell, and by that I mean maybe slightly porky. It is not an off smell, not a bad smell. It, it's just kind of a light pork smell. Now, using this is just like using any other type of shortening, and by shortening I mean a fat that is solid at room temperature, but then it's uh, melted once it gets warmer. So you can actually replace this one for one in any recipe that calls for vegetable shortening, which would be like a Crisco or something like that. And I highly recommend replacing that stuff with this really good healthy lard. You can also use this by melting it letting it cool just a little bit and using it to replace the oil if you, uh, vegetable oil is called for in a recipe. Now to store this, your jars are should be sealed. And again, they haven't been canned, they've just been sealed. So any moisture or anything that you did not render out is still gonna cause mold inside the jars. But um, these are sealed to reduce the airflow coming and going. 
You really want to get these in a dark environment. A pantry shelf is perfect, especially if it has a cabinet door. If it doesn't and the only place that you have to store it, get some sunlight or some bright light on it, then you can go ahead and just put these inside a paper bag to store them and stick them back on a pantry shelf that way. You can, if you want, stick these in the freezer or even the refrigerator if that makes you more comfortable. It's not necessary, but you're welcome to do it. It won't ruin anything at all. Guys, take full advantage of this amazing healthy fat. Take care, goodbye.